We got a good one for you today. iPhone 15 Pro Max versus the S24 Ultra. Which is the better phone and why? Let's get into it. guys here we go front cameras both doing 4k 30 do my obligatory in the Sun put it back on me how does it handle the light is one looking better than the other walking test look at the backgrounds look at me what is it doing better what is it doing worse stabilization microphones all of that let me know. Here's a portrait video or cinematic video, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's cinematic on the iPhone. It's called Portrait on the Galaxy S24 Ultra, but both phones have it. It blurs the background out, out and it puts me in focus. How is it handling that? Is it, I want to see, I'm looking at the sky. The sky behind me is pretty blue and it looks like the iPhone's really turning up the blue, almost to like, <laughs> it looks like it really colored in the sky. I'll be curious what it looks like in, uh, like when I edit it. But yeah, what do you guys think of the portrait mode? This is the front camera, by the way. All right, here's cinematic mode again. Here, dogs. Come here, Young. Young, Young. Hi, boy. Hi. Which one's handling it better, making it look cooler in the background? Yeah, when I'm looking at this, I mean, it could just be the screen colors. Here's my other dog. Shuckle. It's really making my dog like really, really brown, which isn't a bad thing. It looks nice, but um, it's funny. It's like the, it's way more natural on the Galaxy. Again, here is the rear cameras, the grass. Jung, Jungi. Okay, there's the dogs. Let's turn this around on me so you can see what it looks like. This is always like the worst test. I feel like I hate the camera angle when it shows it like this, but. Still, more realistic to show it like this than with, you know, I don't think most people put these things in a, in a gimbal or a, a holder of any kind of sort like that. They usually just hold wow. it in their hand recording video. So what do you guys think? Stabilization, microphones, quality of video. Let's first start off with the design of the S24 Ultra versus the iPhone 15 Pro Max. They go for different design styles. You know, first of all, the S24 Ultra's cameras are looking smaller, but basically they're about the same, or if not a little bit thicker on the side. But when you look at them right here, you can really seem like the iPhones stick out more. And then also they're squared versus rounded. So it's really going to come down to what you want to see, but both of them look amazing in terms of the quality and the really the way they seem premium. They seem super premium. Uh, the other big thing is with these phones is that the cameras are different as well. You can see on the front here, the iPhone, you get a kind of a circular rounded block over there. And then on the S24 Ultra, you get the little camera punch hole. So I prefer the little punch hole rather than having a big thing at the top here. And then, you know, in terms of what I personally think, I think they both look, again, amazing. It's tough for me to pick a winner in which one looks and feels better. Just holding them in your hand. Um, I would say the iPhone being rounded is a little bit easier to hold, but not by much. Um, so both look great. Both charge via USB-C, which is awesome. The S24 Ultra has the S Pen, which we'll show you in a little bit. And this has an inbuilt fingerprint sensor, whereas this only has face unlock. This also has face unlock, but it's not anything to do with being able to really unlock anything but the phone with it. But in terms of design, whew, if I had to pick a winner, who I don't know what I'd pick. I, I'd probably choose the S24 Ultra, I guess, on this one. Now, I mentioned earlier that the iPhone does not have a fingerprint, hasn't had one in a while, but the S24 Ultra does and it's a nice feature to have and it's built right into the screen of the phone and it works really really well it's very very accurate 
So if you want a fingerprint that's accurate and easy to use, you're gonna to wanna to get this one because again, it's just accurate. You can unlock it with your face, but unfortunately you can't use it for anything except for unlocking your phone pretty much. If you wanted to use it for any banking apps or anything like that, you're unable to. The iPhone's Face ID works amazing. It's very accurate. I'm kind of trying to look around from the camera. It's great with banking apps and all of that stuff. If I had to choose one, I think I would choose the iPhone. You know, sometimes when your finger's wet um, and it's just not gonna work well on the screen here for the Galaxy and this Face ID works on everything and it works very accurately. So for me personally, if I was gonna do biometrics, I would personally choose the iPhone with Face ID. Next, let's check out a speaker test. I'll start with the iPhone first. On that song, I can't really tell a difference between volume, bass, mids, lows, highs. They both sound eerily, eerily similar. It's very, very difficult. I gotta choose that one, it's a tie. With this song, I can feel a little bit more low end, a little bit more bass, and I prefer the sound a little bit more on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The Samsung Galaxy Ring has officially, again, been unveiled by Samsung today at MWC. The Samsung Galaxy Ring has officially, again, been unveiled by Samsung today at MWC. Again, the iPhone feels a little bit more low end, sounds a little bit more low end. I actually prefer the sound a little bit more on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, so the speaker test really close. If I gave one a hundred, I'd probably give the other one like a score of a 95. So it's very, very close. Um, but I'd have to give the edge on speakers to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. What about battery life real quick? So with battery life and charging, iPhone can charge wirelessly or wired, which is great. And it's USB-C. Both of them are USB-C. Both of them charge wirelessly. The S24 Ultra can also charge the device on the back of it. So if you turn on reverse wireless charging, you can charge some buds or a watch or another phone on the back of this wirelessly, something the iPhone can't do. So that wins with this. And also the S24 Ultra will charge faster in day-to-day -day charging tests. And then overall in day-to-day -day battery life test, I'd have to give the winner to the S24 Ultra. You get a little bit more battery life to last you throughout the day, but both will last you a really, really long time. Software wise, Galaxy S24 Ultra for the win. A couple of things it does better are it does customizations better. You can customize so much about this phone. There's a, a theme store. You can operate and control the home settings, the home screens. I told you here's the theme store. You also have a wallpaper store built in, icons always on displays that you can come in here and download. Some are free, some are uh, you have to pay for. They have good lock, which allows you to use this phone in a multitude of ways to customize the look and feel of your phone. It, there's so much to do in here, it's absolutely ridiculous. So customizations, S24 Ultra for the big win. Some other things it does that the iPhone cannot do is you can multitask, so you can open up and run multiple windows at once. So I'll just uh, open up the Play Store here, swipe over, and there's a multitude of ways to multitask. Maybe I wanna watch a video on the other, I'll pull this down. And let me just pull my volume down. I'll watch a video while I'm browsing the Galaxy, uh, the Google Store or any other app store or you know, pretty much do, do a, a browser window or Reddit, you can turn it sideways. This is something cool, again, that this phone can do that the iPhone can not do. Also, there's an S Pen built in. So not only can you can control the phone with the S Pen, but you can also write and take screenshots and color and write yourself a, a note or sign a contract or there's a lot of reasons you might want a pen in here and it's built right in and it looks cool and it fits so it tucks away on the phone so for you know that kind of software experience i would personally give it to the s24 ultra also remember that this s24 ultra has a lot of the same apps that the iphone is especially on the you know more popular side if you're a social media person you're going to get 
all these apps that you would expect with this type of phone um, from Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And they work great on here. Don't hear, don't come in here and be like, oh, they work terrible. You know, get your Reddits, your, your mail, daily mail online, TMZ, all the Google apps, banking apps. You know, it's pretty much everything that an iPhone would have. Now, the big things with the iPhone are iMessage so that you can have your iMessage chats going on. You got FaceTime, which I mean, there's alternatives to this stuff. So don't get me wrong. Like you can use WhatsApp and you can use Google Meet to do video chats and stuff. So there are alternatives and they work on this phone as well. But you know, if you're just talking exclusive and then you get the Mac ecosystem with this. Uh, so it's all built in there. So it's really going to depend on what's important to you. But don't let yourself get locked into a digital prison. I was there once with Apple and I don't want to give that too much weight. I know it's a big, it can be a weight, but don't be scared of the other side. There's a lot of good, cool stuff that is built into the Android side as well in terms of with Galaxy, you can really communicate with your Galaxy tablet and Galaxy laptops. And we now have QuickShare like you guys um, have AirDrop. We have QuickShare, which is very similar. So don't be scared to come over to the Android side, but there's some cool stuff as well, obviously with Apple. But if I was for me, I love the software on the Galaxy side. I just think it's more fun and customizable and controllable. Now, one of the great things about both of these phones is performance. Galaxy is super fast, super fluid. It does everything that you would want it to do. Go to androidpolice.com and you know, look and see, loading up a website takes a, a half a second it's a great, great experience. Gaming is great on this. No problems at all. You can do AAA gaming very, very well on here. Um, so if you're a gamer or if you just want a phone that's super fast, this is definitely the way to go. Snapdragon HN3, 12 gigs of RAM, super, super powerful. At the iPhone 15 Pro Max, again, super fast, super powerful. And you're going to be able to do pretty much anything on this as well. This really has AAA gaming. You can get Resident Evil 4, for instance, as one of their top titles to get and play directly on this phone. So it's pretty amazing to be able to play a game like this on here and it plays it well. I've seen it on YouTube, people playing it. It looks awesome. So performance, both of these are super fast. You really can't go wrong with either one. I, I can't even pick a winner, honestly. It's just, it's that close. Some benchmarks, the Galaxy will win. Other benchmarks, the iPhone will win, but both benefit hugely from this power and both do fantastic. Both of these phones are great with outdoor viewing. Honestly, if I had to pick one though, <clears throat> I think I'd choose the iPhone in terms of being able to potentially see it. Just a shade lighter in terms of what I'm looking at. Uh, and what I mean by that is just a little bit easier to see. It's a little bit more white. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but um, yeah, I definitely feel like I can see it. But at the same time, I know that this display on the Ultra has an anti-reflective display. So you can probably, hopefully you can tell. They're both a little bit reflective, but the iPhone is definitely a lot more reflective. And that comes into play with the brightness overall. So for me, I can see the S24 Ultra. It doesn't seem as bright in real life. But I'd rather be less reflective than the iPhone is. So I'm going to give the win in terms of the display to the S24 Ultra. So which one wins? You know, if you've been following this battle that has been going on for more or less 15 years or more, give or take a year, it's basically the same kind of things that you would move to one or the other. So if you want customization, if you want control, if you want a great overall experience with the phone, you're gonna choose Galaxy. Or if you want the ability to be locked into an ecosystem, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, being able to really, really be in an ecosystem between your Mac and your iPad and your iPhone and your, uh, your watch and have all of that be there. This is a great phone. It's a great user experience. It's fast, it's fluid. Now, the Galaxy has improved over that and over the years with their ecosystem. They have the Galaxy Buzz, the Galaxy Watch, they have their tablets, they have computers, you know. So it's definitely caught up in a lot of ways. And then when it comes down to the phones, both of them have really good cameras. You know, at, when you look at these cameras, it's really gonna be which one do you prefer over the other. I think with video, more times than not, I think the iPhone did a better job. I do think with the colors sometimes, 
with photos and video. The iPhone sometimes looks better, but then sometimes it looks a lot worse. I felt like consistently, I thought the S24 Ultra was more consistent. It might not, not have always been the best, but it wasn't always like terrible. You know, like sometimes the colors are just terrible on the iPhone. And then, you know, with all the features that the Galaxy has, it has more features and cool things than I feel like than the iPhone does in terms of its software experience. It has the S Pen as well, which is a hardware thing and a software thing. So for me, I think the more exciting of the two phones is the S24 Ultra. iPhone is really a lot of the same, and to be fair, so is the Galaxy. It hasn't really changed all that much throughout the years. So whichever one you choose, you're gonna be very happy with. Um, if there was someone coming from never having a smartphone, Honestly, either one would be good at this point. Um, you can really make the Galaxy really you know, dumbed down or super, super simple to use. Uh, iPhone can be very simple and easy to use too. I feel like the gestures can take some getting used to. There's no back button, which this has. But for overall, both phones are amazing. They both are very, very close, um, just hardware-wise in general. Let me know which one you think wins in the comments down below. Have a great day, and we'll see you down the road.